Hi guys, and welcome back to another true crime and makeup time video. If you're new here, my name is Zara and I post a new true crime video every single week. So if you love makeup and you love true crime, definitely think about subscribing guys. It would mean so much to me. And if you have any cool case suggestions, definitely leave them down below. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. Today's case, you guys, tell me why I am researching so many cases about pregnant women and babies and stuff like that when I am literally eight months pregnant right now. But today's case is about a man who forced a woman, his employee, to be a date to his sister's wedding and also to be his girlfriend. When she declined, she never came home. Let's get into today's case. So Alicia Bromfield was born on August 28, 1990, in Wills County, Illinois. She was a graduate of Joliet Catholic Academy and was enrolled at the Western Illinois University. She was studying forensic science and criminal justice, and Alicia had been working for Grand Flowers Growers, setting up displays of beautiful flowers at the at her local Home Depot. Alicia grew up with her mother and her grandmother who were very involved in Alicia's life. She was actually so close to her grandmother that when she passed away, Alicia was really, really devastated. And this doesn't mean she didn't have any other family members in her life. It's just that she was super close to these women. She grew up actually with a really big extended family to look out for her. She also loved music boxes and TV. And she always loved TV. She would sit in front of the TV like since she was a little girl and just be like in awe of everything that she was like seeing on TV. When her mother was actually like remarrying and getting married to this other guy, she was like super happy for her family. And yeah, she was just a really nice girl and she had a big family that she loved and cared for. And she was a super happy person who just enjoyed living life. In early 2012, Alicia discovered that she was pregnant. And this was unexpected because the child's father was just this guy she met at university. And he chose not to be involved in the baby's life, but Alicia was still super excited to be pregnant and super excited to become a mother. She was 21 years old at the time, and when she found out she was having a daughter, she already named her Ava Lucille. Now, she had been working at this Home Depot since she was 16, so five years, and her job was super important to her because now that she knew she was going to, you know, have a baby she needed to make sure that she could provide for her and her baby also this job at the home depot the grand flowers growers allowed her to be paid even during the off season which was you know essential for a student with the baby coming and for this very reason alicia often tolerated a lot of i guess intolerable things is that a word intolerable things from her boss brian cooper According to Alicia's mother, Brian immediately liked Alicia when she started working for him. And initially, the two just struck up like a casual friendship. But soon it was evident that Brian was looking for much more than a friendship. Over the years, Brian developed an obsession with Alicia. He constantly made advances towards her and always asked her out on dates. But Alicia, she was not interested at all. She just saw Brian as her supervisor and she was always rejecting him. The weird thing is it was surprising that Brian's obsession with Alicia would not just die like a natural death when he found out she was pregnant with another man's baby. Like, no, he was still into her. Instead, he continued to chase her and intimidate her into becoming his girlfriend. According to complaints that Alicia actually made with the company, Brian often called her a slut, a whore, and other names on several occasions when she would deny or reject his advances. He also did this if he found out or knew that she was having lunch with another guy, like that would make him really upset. And especially if he found out that she was having lunch, you know, with someone else, he would actually deny her lunch breaks. He would be like, no, nope, you can't go on lunch right now. You need to be working and basically try and like spoil her plans. And essentially because she was not having lunch with him, he would, you know, do this to her. And I can't imagine how frustrating that would have been. He would force her to work unexpectedly even like at a moment's notice and if she wouldn't he would like threaten to fire her keep in mind she's like heavily pregnant at this point and he still behaved this way brian had also allegedly told co-workers that alicia was actually his girlfriend he continued to make sexual advances towards her and abuse his authority as her supervisor and according to alicia's friend he would threaten to fire her 
if she didn't come to work, even if she had like a doctor's appointment. So he was really, really abusive and controlling as her employer, which is insane. He used his authority to get her to walk his dog on multiple occasions. Like he even gave her a key to his apartment. Despite multiple complaints that Alicia made to upper management, he still remained her boss. Nothing happened to him. And because he retained his position, he continued his behavior. I mean, there's no repercussions, so why not just do what you got to do, right? Like, and that's what I don't get. It's goddamn Home Depot. He's not like the CEO of Amazon. Like, he needed to be fired for this behavior immediately. Immediately. It's not like you couldn't find another employer like him. Like, he wasn't some genius. He clearly didn't seem like a good boss. How can you conduct business this way? They apparently reprimanded him slightly by sending him home early. Ooh. And they even asked him to attend anger management, but he allegedly never completed any of those courses. And then the job, like the employers, the senior management, never even chased it up. Other employees would also complain about Brian, by the way. It wasn't just Alicia. There was one female employee who actually quit her job because Brian would abuse her like verbally so much. And then one day he was talking about his genitals and then he like came up to her and he like rubbed his crotch up against her and then she was like that's it I'm done and she also allegedly made complaints to senior management about him but again nothing was done so this guy was the king of creeps but Alicia had a difficult like choice to make because the position she was in she was pregnant she didn't want to take a risk you know and I understand that I think it's easy for us to say like oh yeah just find a new job but it's not always the case it's not always easy I'm sure I'm sure she would have at least attempted something else but the fact that they paid her also on the off season maybe that was enough to keep her putting up with this so now Alicia couldn't stand him but one day he forced her to make the ultimate decision either go with me to my sister's wedding or quit your job like lose your job I'm gonna fire you Alicia's mother Sherry knew about Brian's constant constant harassment on her daughter Alicia and the fact that he was verbally abusive towards her and she pleaded with Alicia not to accept this offer and just you know just don't do it but Alicia said she had no choice and I wish she reported this to upper management but I think the reason why she didn't do so is because at this point she had been reporting everything nothing was happening but I feel like this is a pretty huge misstep and a pretty huge abuse of authority you know like like this is a personal matter it's not anything to do with work like why should I come to your freaking sister's wedding but Alicia didn't do that she was just like oh my god if I just do it like maybe he'll leave me alone and I believe she was like eight months pregnant at this point oh my god exactly like me so she tells Brian like fine I'm gonna go with you but we're gonna go as just friends and nothing more and we're gonna return the very next morning Alicia also told her mother that Brian told her that the entire wedding party was going to be staying at the exact same hotel that they were staying at. So there was nothing sort of to be concerned about. And they were going to be staying at the Sandy Bay Beach Resort in Wisconsin. And the fact that the rest of the wedding party was actually staying in the same hotel made Alicia and her mother feel a little bit more comfortable and safer in the process. I'm telling you, I couldn't do it. I couldn't go for hours to an event, well, for hours riding to a place in a car with this freaking creepazoid to an event, spend time at the event with him and then like go and stay in the same hotel as him. Like, why can't I get my own ho hotel room? Like, why do I have to be in the same hotel as you? Like that already is massive red flags to me and not while eight months pregnant. But again, I'm not in that situation. So I can't really say anything, huh? Especially since I know he likes me. Like, no way. No, 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 no way. So on August 18th, 2012, Alicia and Brian they leave for this long drive to Wisconsin. It's about a four hour drive from Illinois. Shortly after they arrive at the hotel, Alicia actually texts her mom and says, her and Brian got into a fight and she's coming home straight away and it's like she's done. She's not gonna go to this wedding anymore. Alicia's mom was actually concerned because yes, it's his sister's wedding, but it was actually Brian who was supposed to walk his sister down the aisle on her wedding day. So if they're leaving, like, you know, what the hell? She told Alicia, look, you need to tell his sister that you're going to be leaving. She said that the reason why they had this fight is because when they got to this hotel, Alicia finds out that the wedding party is not staying at the same hotel as her and Brian and that she didn't even know where the wedding party was staying. Like he completely lied to her and 
I mean, that would be so frustrating, but like scary too, because now you're in this hotel, like alone with him, you know? And then a few hours later, Alicia texts her mom and says, okay, you know what? It's fine. We've decided to stay and I'm just going to get this freaking wedding over and done with. Felicia and Brian were seen arriving at the wedding. The wedding went well. Brian walked his sister down the aisle and it was an outdoor ceremony. And at the reception, like everything was fine. And Alicia and Brian even took a photo together, like at the reception. Now, as things were going well, like they were having like a friendship moment, I guess. But Brian, he just kept pestering Alicia about being in a relationship. He would just make unwanted sexual advances towards her. And then eventually she's like, you know what? Enough's enough. And she was just sick of it. She told him, I'm going to stay at this wedding as your date. But once it's over, like I'm done. We're not even going to have this casual friendship that I've allowed you to have with me this whole time. And once we get home, I'm done. Like that's it. Like no more. I'm not going to put up with your shit anymore. I guess, I guess like being alone with him and she probably just realized like, what the hell am I doing? Like this, he's a douchebag. Like he's my boss, but here I am like allowing this behavior from him, you know? And that's not to put blame on her. That's not what I mean. I just mean that like, she probably realized like it needs to stop. Then after this, it's still the wedding. Um, Brian, he becomes like overcome with rage towards Alicia. And as the night continued, he just got angrier and angrier at the thought of like Alicia not being in his life. Maybe he thought like, dang, she's like, actually going to finally leave. Losing Alicia like from his life completely was not something he could handle or accept. So his built up anger grew as he just became more and more intoxicated at the wedding. He would later say that it was at this time that he began having thoughts of harming Alicia. Now, when they returned to the hotel, the Sandy Bay Resort, it was well past midnight. And being pregnant, Alicia was exhausted. She was like, I'm so tired. I'm just going to go to bed. And because we're going to wake up early the next morning to go back home. So as she gets into her respective bed, she goes to sleep straight away. For the next two and a half hours, Brian just sat there drinking, watching Alicia sleep as he just thought about everything. He was smoking cigarettes. He was pacing the room and just basically like what do you call it? What do you call it? He was escalating himself. He finally gets into bed. And with this, like as he gets into the bed, they said respective beds. But when I saw pictures of the hotel room, it looked like just a double bed. So I don't know, but he gets into bed. And apparently as he gets into bed, it like wakes Alicia up a little bit. So then when he saw that she was kind of like waking up, he asks her, Hey, <laughs> like, it's not funny, but he asks her, hey, do you want to go and watch a movie tomorrow night? Like on a date? What? So Alicia's obviously like, oh, you freaking psychopath. So she's like, no, no, I'm like done with you. There's no more friendship between us at all, especially when we get home, like we're done. Now, many may disagree with me here, but this is something I feel she shouldn't have done. I'm not blaming her. I'm just saying like, if you have some body that clearly wants something from you that you aren't willing to give and you are alone and technically in an unsafe position or place, I feel like you should kind of just not say whatever that they want to calm the situation, but say kind of like the right thing so that the situation doesn't escalate. Let them know, you know, okay, we can talk about this later. Like, let's just get home. I just want to get some rest and let's just talk about it later. Like, I feel like the time of him, you and him being alone in the hotel room is probably not the best decision, especially he's drinking, like he probably smells like alcohol, but I'm sure at least she didn't think this way at all. I feel like I have the biggest mouth sometimes and my big mouth can get me into trouble because I always have to tell the truth and say what I feel. And, you know, I have a reckless mouth basically, which this can cause people to snap. And it did. Brian snapped. He lunged at Alicia, who was laying on the bed. He straddled her. He placed his arms around her neck and he squeezed. Just the thought of him sitting on a pregnant belly, like the pain that you would feel and like the panic. <sighs> Alicia pleaded, you know, not for her life, but for her babies. She was like, think of my baby, think of my baby. But Brian didn't think of the baby. He dragged Alicia from the bed onto the ground, continued to strangle her until he killed her. I know. Not only did he kill her, he obviously killed that unborn baby, that poor baby. But he wasn't done. In one final disgusting act, 
he removes Alicia's clothes and he and then he takes intimate photos of her because he just wanted to see her naked what she looked like naked that's what he said but Brian had already seen Alicia naked she just didn't know Brian's abuse was far more severe than Alicia could even anticipate this sicko would hide a camera in his bathroom at his home and when Alicia would come and walk the dogs and then you know she'd use his bathroom obviously when she was done he would replay the tapes and watch it he then even took the same camera and placed it in the hotel bathroom that they were staying in inside like a garbage bin so he could watch her coming in and out of the shower what a sick like she's pregnant like what a sick oh my god all of these tapes were discovered later on then after killing alicia brian places a blanket over her body and a pillow underneath her head he then goes and sleeps in the bathtub so the next morning brian's like he wakes up and he's like, okay, I'm going to kill myself because I realized what I've done. I mean, I'm guessing he realized what he had done straight away, but it's morning time now, you know, like everything kind of clears. So he walked over to the bay, like the nearby bay. He attempted to drown himself, but couldn't go through with it. Instead, he goes and he drives to a nearby gas station. He is now soaking wet because he walked into the bay. So arrives at this gas station soaking wet. He walks into the convenience store and he says to the, um, attendant can you call 911 so he phones 911 and he tells the dispatcher he wanted to report a murder and he wanted to report the murder of Alicia Bromfield 21 years old when the dispatcher asks like well do you know do you know why you're reporting this like who did it he goes yeah I did I did it within minutes the authorities arrive on the scene and they grab Brian and they take him into custody once while he's interviewed he um provides explicit eerie details of the murder so even with this he tells investigators that him and alicia were somewhat dating and that he wanted more but he respected her refusal because she was pregnant with a another man's child and it was when she threatened to uh cut off all communication from him is when he just lost it he said the reality was setting in that there wasn't even going to be a friendship when they got back to illinois which was today the sunday he was debating on what he was doing and then he was like prepping his mind thinking that yes i am going to harm her in his confession brian stated that the two of them they had an argument the night of the wedding when they got back to the room and after alicia fell asleep that's when he began debating on harming her like should I do it? Should I not? He decided to do it. And he finally decided to strangle her. So now he's saying he took a cord, possibly like a phone charger cable and wrapped it around her throat. And that's when he jumped on top of her and began to do that. And that's when she began pleading for her unborn child's life. But Brian didn't stop till Alicia was dead. Then he said that he wanted to see her naked. And that's when he assaulted her. And how you can even want that, I don't understand. I don't understand that. Men, like, I'm sorry any men watching this but some men's urges are like wild when asked if alicia fought back he said she did fight back and she was yelling about the baby and saying don't hurt me don't hurt the baby and that's when she bit his finger and then they ended up rolling off the bed and then once they were on the floor is when he really really strangled her to death and did all those other horrible things just a pregnant woman like falling off the bed that alone, if even if he didn't kill her, like that alone could have caused a miscarriage for her if she lands her on her stomach. Like, oh, just the thought of it. Oh my God. So a police friend of Alicia's mother, Sherry, said that she was given the responsibility of delivering this horrific news to Sherry. And Sherry states that when this police officer, you know, came up to her and told her what had happened, she immediately knew that Alicia was gone, but there was no turning back. She said the officer had... um tears in his eyes and she thought he was going to tell her something like alicia died in a car accident or something like that but when he said that there had been a homicide she couldn't even believe it and still to this day like her life has been changed forever brian then also confessed to tying up an ex-girlfriend in the past because he couldn't get through to her and he just wanted to talk to her unfortunately that woman never reported this so when you think of it that way, if she had just reported this incident, I'm not blaming her again. I'm just saying we have to think sometimes when these things happen because it could have been what happened to Alicia could have been prevented because if he had already had that, maybe he would have lost his job. Following his detailed confession, Brian Cooper was arrested on two counts 
of first degree homicide. Two prosecutors, this was like a slam dunk case. This guy admitted everything, you know? Not only did they have Brian's multiple confessions, but they had his DNA all over the crime scene. And when it came to the trial, it was a massive shock to them when, and Alicia's family and friends, when Brian decided to plead not guilty. Not only did Brian murder Alicia and her unborn baby, but by pleading not guilty, he is now making her family endure sitting through a trial and like revisiting and rehearing about everything that he did to her. Like, <sighs> such a douche. So despite his confession, he pleads not guilty due to mental disease or defect and his defense ended up being voluntary intoxication can you believe that's even a defense voluntary intoxication so i voluntarily chose to get freaking drunk and i made a mistake i'm not guilty so anyway he said that he was so intoxicated that well he was too intoxicated to know uh what he was doing that night basically he was too drunk to know right from wrong the prosecution tried to poke a hole in a story saying, well, you confessed in detail about what you did to Alicia and the fact that you had already had previous um, uh, like allegations of abuse against Alicia as her employer. Brian was able to recall in great detail of what he did to Alicia, the, the phone cord, the strangling, the raping, you know, things like that. Way more detail than someone who was severely intoxicated would be able to tell. If he was so drunk, how the hell did he remember every single detail about what happened to Alicia? Details that matched up with forensic evidence later on. I forgot to mention that Brian also tried to commit suicide with a dull knife, like after. Then he walked, you know, walked into the bay and stuff like that. So it's like, it doesn't sound like someone who didn't know what they were doing. Even though he was able to provide every single detail of the murder and his confession and all the freaking other background to this whole story, two out of ten members of the jury, and these two were females, found him to be too drunk to commit this crime. Yeah. So now this obviously resulted in a hung jury. They did find Brian guilty of third degree sexual assault though. But how when he killed a woman and her unborn baby? I can't believe that. And especially for it to be a female and don't come for me. It just doesn't make sense. Woman to woman, forget his past. Like, let's just forget about it. His present, the crime he committed. Alcohol is not to blame. Alicia's family and friends were mortified. How could someone possibly think that Brian was too intoxicated when he was able to recall everything? Everything. Brian confessed to the murder more than once, claiming it was intentional that he had been thinking about it, yet that wasn't enough. So now the family, because it was a hung jury, the family now had to endure a second trial. Sherry said that she would not let what happened to her daughter happened to another woman. And along with Alicia's friends, they all started lobbying to have the defense of voluntary intoxication removed from the list of acceptable defenses. They made history when voluntary intoxication was banished from the state of Wisconsin, along with 31 other states in America. It was an enormous victory. However, this law would not apply to Brian as he had like claimed it before the law was established. Does that make sense? So unfortunately, he was able to use voluntary intoxication again in his second trial as his defense because his second trial happened a year later, but the defense that he put down originally was like grandfathered in. So he was allowed to use it again since it was older than when it was passed, if that makes sense. But this time, nobody in the jury bought it. At Brian's second trial, the jury once again heard about Brian's sick obsession with Alicia and how he abused his um, power as an employer against her. They saw the images captured by his video recordings of her, like in the in the bathroom and things like that, which I think is like, ugh, I know it's a jury and things like that and they have to kind of see it, but it's like such a violation of her privacy, not only for Brian to see it, but now for like multiple people to see it, two trials. Like, ugh. I think that's horrible. They listened. They could listen to Brian's confession about when he killed Alicia, how he talks about it in great detail about how Alicia begs for her baby's life. Like they heard all of it. Within one hour of jury deliberation, Brian Cooper was found guilty on two counts of homicide for the death of Alicia and her unborn baby, Ava Lucille. On July 24th, 2014, Brian was sentenced to two consecutive life terms. Thank goodness. Now, Sherry, Alicia's mother, she filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the Home Depot and uh, Grand Flower Growers, like her actual employer. So according to the lawsuit, the companies were negligent because 
Brian showed a great deal of misconduct in the months prior to the murder and for years prior to that. He had called Alicia a whore and a slut on multiple occasions and Alicia reported these, um, you know, um, acts of abuse mo on multiple occasions too. Despite this, no action was taken to investigate, monitor or limit the control Brian Cooper had over Alicia as an employer. Sherry believed that the companies had a duty of care towards Alicia as her employers. She was their employee. It was their duty to protect her from another employee that was threatening, harassing, or manipulating Alicia and her job to suit him. They failed to uphold this duty. On top of that, this man had a known history of sexually harassing, verbally abusing, and physically intimidating his female employees. There were also other female employees who reported his harassment to upper management. And the main fact in this argument was that Brian used his employer's status to force Alicia to attend a personal event with him, which was 150 million percent outside the scope of her job. Sherry did not believe that Alicia would have agreed to attending this wedding with Brian had he not been her employer and threatened to fire her from the job, a job that she needed being a single mother. The lawsuit was initially dismissed because the company argued that they had no duty to control Brian's behavior outside the workplace as the murder took place at his sister's wedding, not on the job site, but that decision was eventually overturned and reversed. The appeals court found that Brian had a history of harassing female workers that led them to feeling uncomfortable and some even quitting. And the fact that his behavior was obviously reported to senior management and they did nothing about it. All they did was, you know, make him uh, attend anger management, which they never followed up on, which he never actually did. The judges found that although the crime did not take place on like during workplace activity or on the job site, Brian used his supervisory authority to intimidate and threaten Alicia. And he couldn't have done this if the companies didn't allow him to have supervisory authority over Alicia. So if they didn't allow him to be her boss, she wouldn't have been threatened, you know? The companies then argued, even if they were able to anticipate that his verbal abuse and behavior was going to escalate into physical violence, they could not anticipate that he could murder Alicia. Like, how would they know that? But then the court says, no, 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 that basically the way that Brian had conducted himself in the workplace, his abuse of authority, his harassment, his essential physical harassment too, with the rubbing the genitals on that female coworker. All these allegations that were reported to the company senior management, a reasonable employer could have and should have foreseen that Brian would take the next small step into committing something way more violent. So the companies would then held liable for the deaths of Alicia and her unborn baby, Ava Lucille, which is kind of crazy if you think about it, because when you report something to your like boss, right, you don't really go to like the CEO of Home Depot, right? You go to like Bob from like boss level two whatever so these stupid guys who didn't take these allegations seriously senior management or not like this led the companies into being a down like these this led the companies into a downfall you know so i mean the number of times that it was reported i don't blame them good Shortly afterwards, um, Alicia's parents created the Purple Project, which was an organization that helps financially support single mothers and provides grief counseling and retreats for parents who are mourning the loss of a child. Isn't it mind blowing that this even happened because like a boss did this to an employee? Like that's crazy. But I guess that Alicia and Brian had been coexisting in a workplace relationship for years that Brian felt like he had some sort of right to his Alicia. He didn't. The excuse that alcohol made me do it really annoys me, like really bugs the crap out of me. Like I've said before, and a few of you guys have actually commented and agreed, if something serious happens when you're drunk, don't you kind of like snap out of it and sober up a little bit to like realize what you're doing? Doesn't alcohol make you sluggish, slow, blurry vision? How do you get so angry when you're in that state that you can strangle someone and like have the power to strangle someone? I mean, I, I know he's a male much stronger and that's possibly why, and I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's just weird. I don't believe he would have been that drunk. I don't, I don't believe he would have been drunk. Like, I feel like he probably was intoxicated, but not like drunk, drunk. Because when you're drunk, drunk, you're like a slob kebab. He honestly seems like such a freaking creep because his behavior like goes outside the workplace, not allowing her to have lunch breaks and stuff. Like, that's so weird. Like, what a creep. And it wasn't just limited to him having, you know, this God complex at work. I wish his ex-girlfriend, you know, reported him to the police when he tied her up to talk. Like, I wish she just did that, but maybe she was afraid of him, but 
I, it just would have, could have prevented something. We don't even know if it would have, you know. Maybe he would have actually lost his job if he was charged with that crime. But again, with police, you never know if they're actually going to do something about situations. And it must be hard for the police too, you know, because each situation must be just, I don't know. I don't know. Either way, I feel like, yep, yeah, the employees are at fault because they are employers. If they had reported his behavior, you know, doing this kind of stuff, then possibly the police would have taken more action because it's like a big corporation, you know, reporting it. But they're definitely, definitely to blame. I feel horrible for Alicia. She seemed like a sweet girl, so young, super excited to be a mom. And like that asshole took everything away from her, everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below and I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe. Leave me a comment. Just say hi <laughs> and I will see you in the next one, guys. Besitos. Bye.